Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, it's great to see a lot of uh, important people here, and um, hopefully we can see the benefit of using it in your applications from metropolitan to country applications and everywhere in between. Uh, basically, a little bit of background, cyber technology um, do a broad variety of UAVs. Um, I'm the project manager of the Cyber Quads, which are these compact urban close range platforms I'm going to be showing you. But just to bear in mind, we also do larger vehicles, uh, fixed wing long endurance up to 10 hours uh, with combined thermal optical cameras for more for CFA bushfire applications, but potentially in the future as regulations loosen, we could be using them in metropolitan areas for <coughs> response to uh, fires in uh, from the sky. Basically it's a compact close range VTOL for vertical takeoff and landing unmanned aerial vehicle uh, but in a nutshell it's a simple way of getting a camera in the sky uh, and a safe way compared to a conventional manned helicopter. So it's a quadrotor so it has the four fans so that's what makes it mechanically very simple. There's only four moving parts. There's not a complicated swash plate and tail rotor and all the things you normally have. And it runs off electric batteries, which are rechargeable. So you don't have to deal with fuels and oils and other mess. It's safely shrouded. So there are other open quad rotor helicopters uh, emerging, which have the benefit of the mechanical simplicity. But what the ducts give you is that safety that you can bump into walls and be near people without the risk of cutting them up with the exposed blades. Um, and even if you do put your fingers in these props, they have an emergency cutout, so they'll, they'll turn themselves off. So you're not going to do any damage to people if they do. Safety is a big aspect that we focused on, and compactness and transportability as well. So this is what you'd possibly have in the field, where uh, this can be stood up on top of the Pelican case, and you can operate from that uh, as a sort of stationary terminal. Uh, or there's the handheld options to be able to walk around and use video glasses to see what the aircraft's seeing. So flying over smoke is, is doable, but uh, you are going to obviously have detrimental camera effect with that heavy smoke, and the heat will, will reduce your endurance. Uh, wind, it can handle up to 20 knots wind uh, in position hold with the GPS. It's a gas and chemical detection payload, so it can remotely detect dangerous chemicals and gases, particularly uh, in fire application CO2 levels, carbon monoxide, uh, LOL I believe is of interest, things like that. And it's also gyro stabilised, so even if you're flying forward and back aggressively, it keeps the camera level. There's the um, wrist mounts and other more portable video receiving units allow a, a large team of operators all to have their own real-time footage of what the aircraft's seeing. Um, no brushes that spark, uh, no gearboxes that chatter and make noise. The only thing we can't warrant to be intrinsically safe is the connection and disconnection of the battery and that's usually in a safe environment anyway where the operator is changing the battery so once it's mid-flight it is intrinsically safe to not spark and cause a fire. Staying below 120 metres is legal uh, but we've found even 30 to 50 metres is enough to get a good aerial view. But we can fly up to one kilometre line of sight and that's limited by the video link but um, yeah generally 100 metres is more than enough it's a speck in the sky by then. The payload option just bolts in, four bolts off and on and plug it in the power and you've got different uh, options there. So and then the front mounted camera can be changed to HD or combined thermal optical or low light. And then we also have a low, an even lower lux black and white camera option that can see in real pitch black but it's only black and white so you lose that colour ability during the day. That's the Cyberquad Maxi.